Meteorologist Darren Tuttle here with you. It is time to talk about the storms for today, so thanks for joining me. It's about uh, 10 or so minutes after 12. This will be a quick lunchtime weather live update for you, and we'll see if those storms have changed any in the outlook as far as what we talked about last night as far as position, timing, and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and follow this. Share it with your friends and family. Tell them about the alternative that they have to watch severe weather for coverage and also for forecasts. They'll be a lot less uh, um, hype-based. <laughs> They'll be a lot less scary. Uh, They'll be more scientific and just basically straight to the point. I cut to the chase and uh, talk about what you actually will see, not what you could wish, might, hope, you know, in the, in the realm of uh, severe weather mania here in, in Oklahoma. Uh, it gets a little out of control sometimes, so I, I like to bring it all back down reality. So there will be some big storms today, just as far as you know, thunderstorms themselves. That's typical this time of the year, and yes, some of those will be supercell storms, which produce the big hail, and that does mean some tennis ball size hail is still likely in the uh, model outputs. So that has not changed. Although, just like I said, the last hail event, a lot of these storms will have that one inch to golf ball size. That, that's far more common than the giant hail. That will occur, but. If you were to take the whole state, you know, on a on a storm system like that, and you were to break it down, you know, you're like one percent of the state sees the giant hail, or maybe even a half a percent of the state. So when you're talking about that, it kind of gives you perspective. Is yeah, there's gonna be some big storms out there, but the probability of me getting that big hail is like down to this teeny tiny fraction of a fraction. Um, so that's the kind of um, information I provide to kind of help uh, relax your fears a little bit. But the deal is. When you have my weather app, AT's Weather to Go, it'll tell you if a big storm is moving in your direction. So you'll know if you're underneath that little teeny tiny probability of seeing some big hail, the rest of it, you don't have to worry about it. Um, that's what the app is for. It's good for that. Uh, I typically cover live tornado events. So if I do see a potential for a tornado, I'll cover those live. If it's just going to be garden variety wind and hail, I typically don't, unless it's just some really big event where I've just got a lot of free time on my hands. So that kind of helps to keep me sane because there's storms almost, you know, I don't, I don't say every day now because we've been in kind of a drought situation here lately, but in every week, typically, there's something going on in Oklahoma, and it's a big state, and that's a lot to cover. Um, so that's kind of how I look at things and kind of where it goes. If you're new here, that's how the approach is, and I worked in television for, gosh, it was uh, 12 years, um, so I've had my fill of that industry, <laughs> but I took everything I learned, and I do it here. Um, so that way you guys can have an alternative approach, getting that same background, um, but on a scientific level. All right, so let's move on to what I want to talk about first, and that is temperatures outside. So here's a look at the state in general, and we're getting a south and southwest wind and west wind coming in from southwest Oklahoma, pushing into central Oklahoma. So this is that drying air mass. This is where dew point values will drop off. Currently, they're in the 60s here, but they're into the 40s in this region and 50 so the drier air is mixing down the surface from upstairs it's coming in off the Edwards Plateau and out across western Texas and the downslope of the little terrain uh, foothills around New Mexico and all that so that dry air is mixing eastward here in Oklahoma and these southwest winds will carry it uh, in this afternoon right here across central Oklahoma down along the I-35 corridor what this does is it puts a big block at storms anywhere where that dryer has infiltrated now behind that, we've got a cold front up here that's developing and still kind of getting its act together. Probably a little pre-wind shift line uh, in this area uh, is kind of where that is. So that's not going to be the actual cold front. There's sometimes you can get little boundaries that will develop out ahead of the main synoptic boundary. And so the actual cold front is where you can see those really stiff surface winds. And you can see those up around 20 to 25 knots up here in northwest Oklahoma. So this is the actual boundary of the cold front. This will quickly work south overtake any weak wind shift in this region and then we'll be focused on kind of a couple of boundaries um, and then we'll have the dry line that'll set up out here uh, where the dry line and the cold front intersect usually get storms east side of that and then they'll develop and move east and southeast so let's get into the details and how that that will evolve by the way it's already in the uh, mid 90s and upper 90s here in southwest oklahoma 98 degrees oh my goodness so that heat's coming this way now this uh, the, the sounding here across Oklahoma City indicates a huge cap uh, right here. So in other words, if you'd normally see this sounding uh, in an atmosphere where we're only getting to the 80s or low 90s, you wouldn't see a cloud in the sky, much less a storm. But the forecast sounding um, says we have to hit 100 degrees for the convective temperature. 
but the sounding itself only maxes out at 96. In other words, the best potential it can see is 96. So what this sounding says, so there's going to be any storms at all in Oklahoma City. All right, so keep that in mind. So the cap has to break to get storms, and that's one of the limiting factors for us. However, should any storm form this environment, the, um, let's see, get this behind my head. Boy, it's hard to see. I can't show that, can I? Oh, that's frustrating. I'll have to change these graphics. Uh, but anyway, the significant hail size on the sound is up to around two to potentially three inches in diameter. So that's where the baseball size hail wording comes from. So let's take a look at temperatures. All right, so this uh, morning going into the afternoon, we're going to warm things up. There's 98, 96, 98 degrees, 99, 100 degrees there. It looks like in Newcastle or Chickasha. Otherwise, upper 90s here in Oklahoma City. So we get really close to breaking that convective temperature just by itself. In other words, no front or anything else in the, in the in play. However, you have to have a boundary in this particular case. Uh, and we'll show you the dew points of where that boundary will lie up. But meanwhile, whew, look at that. 100 is all the way down in southern and southwestern Oklahoma this afternoon. And as that front comes through, we'll cool things down quickly. And it shoves all that um, cooler air to the from the north to the south. And it shoves that hot air down south here by the time we head to 7 o'clock in the evening. So it's a fast-moving front. Now here's a look at where the surface features will be because this is critical because you can't have storms in dry air so you have to find out where the moist air is. So if we go through time, I want you to focus on the dryer out here. It's in the teens and 20s and 30s and 40s. This is the dew point uh, and this will surge and mix down into central Oklahoma. So here we go. There's, uh, let's see, there's 1 o'clock. Where are we? There's 4 uh, let's see, there's four o'clock right there. So what happens here at this particular time, we've got our cold front that's doing a little something like this. Oh, look at it cutting right through uh, El Reno. All right. So there's your cold air coming down from the south and from the north and west. This is actual dew point values. But what we're going to be focusing on is this little guy right here, this little blue line. This is where the dry air is mixing in from the dry line that's taking shape. So what this means is you can't have storms behind the cold front. You can't have storms over here in the dry air. So the only storms you can have is going to be just east side of this dry line and on the east side of this cold front. So that means your best shot at seeing some storms this afternoon are going to be in this area along the boundary and then right about here like so. And then they'll develop and then move over into this region off these boundaries uh, moving south and uh, east with time. So that means... I don't see much going on in south central, southern Oklahoma, I should say, um, especially west of I-35. Uh, this front won't help to trigger those storms because the dry air is already out ahead of it, which means the only threat I can see is going to be eastern Oklahoma County, uh, in say the Norman and Moore area, and you're just barely on the cusp around right the border. So how does it look like when you look at storms in the development stage? Uh, here's a model I love to use during severe weather to kind of give you that highlight for you. Just at 5 and 6 o'clock, it shows thunderstorms developing from eastern Osage County, southeastern Kansas, backbilling up into Tulsa, out just west of there toward Lincoln County. So this is Oklahoma County right here, this little square. So we go one more hour. Let's see what happens with that. All right, so there we're in towards 7 o'clock. You can see how these storms just clip the southeastern tip of the county. So that's why I was saying Moore, Norman, um, Choctaw, Twin Lake, or, uh, uh, Tinker, you guys are kind of on the edge of where that boundary lies. Then those storms will move to the south and east, producing some large hail with some of the stronger ones, smaller hail with the other ones. And they'll kind of continue until about, let's see, this is uh, around 9 o'clock in the evening. And then by 10 o'clock, a lot of these will start to die out. There won't be much left probably by 10 or 11. All right, so they won't last that long once the daytime heating is gone. But you can see how the biggest storms roll through the Tulsa area, northeastern Oklahoma, and east central Oklahoma, just east of Oklahoma City, on down the south. Um, so for Oklahoma City itself, like I said, I think that right now the data shows the best shot of us seeing anything is going to be right on the east side of town. And east side of town meaning literally closer to the uh, county border of Oklahoma. So um, I don't see anything out west. I don't see anything up north for Edmond. I don't see anything out in... Uh, you know, Tuttle or the airport or anything like that. It's all going to be far southeastern sides of the metro, and that extends down around Moore and then into Norman and then back uh, east along that boundary. So Pink, Little Axe, Macomb, McLeod, Shawnee. Um, you know, you've got Choctaw like on the western fringe of that. So right now, that's what the data shows. The only thing that could change this is if the dry line doesn't quite mix as far east 
and that dryer doesn't quite punch in this far. And that would allow those storms to kind of develop more on top of Oklahoma City, but they still wouldn't get going until they got east back into that uh, region I talked about. Um, so that would be their, their, the best chance of them being mature to produce the hail uh, would be in that area. Now, I did not talk about the tornado threat because, uh, we, as we talked about last night, uh, the main deal with this one is the hail threat. Uh, the tornado threat, in my opinion, is very low here across Oklahoma. Now, where I can show you the tornado threat's a little bit higher, it's going to be kind of around near Tulsa, up toward um, northeastern, uh, excuse me, in the southeastern of Kansas. So let me show you that real quick, and then we'll cut you loose. So you see the, the ring here of the, the tornado potential is in southwestern Missouri. Uh, far southeastern Kansas and far northeastern Oklahoma, just northeast of Tulsa. Uh, so that's the best tornado potential. Uh, here, I'm not too worried about it. We might see a freak, uh, brief, weak tornado in this environment, um, you know, east of those boundaries I talked about, but really the cloud bases are very high, which makes it very hard to get a tornado in that environment. In other words, there's not enough low level moisture for that. Um, they should be pretty high based, which usually means they're hailers. Um, so I'm not overly concerned. Uh, it would be a freak event. Um, however, northeastern is a little bit better moisture convergence. And let me show you that on a couple of views here. For those of you folks that are still sticking around and going, I got a little bit of time to learn a little bit about meteorology. Okay, so here's the significant tornado parameter uh, as we go into the time. Here's that little sweet spot I talked about. This is around 5 o'clock. Uh, you can see that highlighted area here on the scale. It goes up here around Tulsa County and then kind of a little higher in the southwestern Missouri, northwestern Arkansas, the tip of Kansas, and northeast Oklahoma. And it's not very high in general. These scales, these numbers are generally in the mid-range. So we had that little fluke up here in the high range briefly for one hour. Um, so you, it, talking about you would have to really maximize your potential. Um, but there is a little bit of minor potential through Tulsa County for a potential tornado uh, in the rest of northeastern Oklahoma on the low end. But you can see that accordingly to those numbers here in South Central and even Southeastern Oklahoma, they're, they're almost off the chart as in the other end. So down to the noise, down very, very low. Um, so that is an issue that I like to see because I don't want to see those high numbers everywhere. I want to see them mostly low and uh, not in our neck of the woods. Now we took about uh, some hail. Let's see how that pans out with some of the uh, hail forecasts. Now, the maximum hail swap on some of these storms that do develop, they're in the one inch to about golf ball size range, anywhere from one to an inch and three quarters. So that's about golf ball size hail, and that's in some of these in Missouri and also in northeastern Oklahoma. So that's the majority of how the max hail should be in most of these storms. However, you're still going to have, like I talked about, some of those, you know, right in the middle of those cores of the supercells, you're going to get up to uh, tennis ball size like we saw the other day. Potential tornadoes. There'll be a lot of lightning with those storms. Uh, let's see. Let's do what I want to show you next. Let's talk about. Does it have it on here? Yeah, let's do this. So, the other thing you can get with uh, heavy supercell storms is a very heavy rainfall in a short amount of time. So, to give you an idea of that the models do indicate here in the yellow to red. Um, shading, that's anywhere from one to two to almost three inches of rain. So you can get a downpour, especially if you get a couple of storms that trail over the same area, and that's here over uh, eastern third of Oklahoma in this little swath and down across southeastern parts of southeastern Oklahoma before they die out. Uh, but nothing here in central Oklahoma as far as heavy rain goes. Like I said, I think the closest we could see any raindrops to even um, start to accumulate in the bucket would probably right along, uh, let's see, oh, lost it be just east of Oklahoma County. Okay, so let's see, that was what I want to show you with that one. Um, anything else? I think, I think that was it. Yeah, I think that's what I want to show you. Okay, well listen, that was all for me. I get back to work, but I appreciate it. Um, I don't have time to answer a lot of questions here today. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, depends on what I'm doing. Uh, it's going to be hot out there. Make sure you wear some sunscreen. You'll get sunburned really quick. I've already been sunburned a couple times <laughs> in this past month just from on the weekends working out, outdoors in the house. Uh, so it can happen uh, before you know it. Um, let me think. I'll be covering storms probably after 5 o'clock uh, time frame. Assuming any of these try to develop uh, into tornadic type situations up in northeastern Oklahoma. Probability is low, but it's not zero. So I'll keep an eye on that for you guys up there. 
here in East Central, I don't expect uh, much, uh, except for some couple of hailers. Um, we'll keep an eye on those as well. And that's about it, guys. Uh, I know when you see some other forecasts, they paint the whole state, you know, getting hail. I want you to see, based off these model data that I show you, is that it's not always the case. A lot of times it's just individual storms, which, although are big, and they're, they, they do affect, you know, whatever population they go over, in the broad scheme of the state, they're very small. In other words, uh, if you were to have an entire county of Oklahoma, they're in about, we'll call it 10% of that county is being affected by that storm, which means 90% of that county won't see anything of substantial uh, matters. So keep that in mind, county by county by county, it really adds up pretty soon. You know, you have very small coverage of storms over a large area. Um, so anytime you see those maps or the paints the whole area getting storms, that's, that's never going to be the case. They're all, especially this time of the year, it's supercell. Supercell storms are isolated. Um, there, there are very few of them, typically a handful. Uh, literally, you can count on your hand, one, worst case two, you never want two, <laughs> but typically one. Uh, and then unless they develop into a squall line where that covers a larger area, um, then that's a different matter. But this looks like right now is more of a supercell type deal of large hail. Um, and I'm sure they'll kind of get some what they call clusters that will develop, which is a couple of cells will merge into each other and become multicellular, which means they'll kind of fight for dominance and that never really quite separate again get back into their individual status um, once they become kissing cousins. <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up. But, you know, once they become kissing cousins, then they're just a multi-cell uh, hybrid junk. <laughs> they're no longer the individual proud hail maker that they once were. Uh, so it's good to see those things collide typically because it kind of starts to weaken them uh, after a while. All right, I think that was uh, it for me. Guys, have a great rest of your afternoon and uh, stay safe out there. And don't play in the hail or the storms. Get indoors when the thunder roars, is the old saying, okay? Make sure you use my weather app, AT's Weather to Go. It's free, Apple, Google Play. If you don't use it any other time of the year, which it does work every time of the year, it works all across the country, um, at least use it during the springtime for the tornado warning uh, prediction. Uh, it'll let you know up to 10, 20 minutes early before an actual warning comes out. I see it over and over and over. You guys will send me screenshots and go, hey, you send me a twisting storm alert, and then all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, I get the official tornado warning out. That's an extra 15 minutes to take shelter. What do you do with that kind of time? I mean, seriously, you got that's like all the time in the world when it comes to protecting yourself and your family from a tornado. So, all right, listen, I'll get back to it. You guys get back to it, and we'll talk again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.